Hello, I'm Philip Schwitzer, CEO of NTI Audio, and I'm going to introduce you to the sound level meter of the XL2. The sound level meter is one of the most powerful implemented functions in the XL2, and it's the ideal tool for community noise analysis, building acoustics, industrial noise control, machinery noise analysis, and further applications. The M series measurement microphones feature an automatic sensor detection that reads the previously stored calibration data out of the microphone into the measurement instrument. As soon as we connect this microphone, it switches over to ASD and reads all the calibration data out of the measurement microphone, including the factory calibration and the last user calibration together with the measurement date and time. For starting the sound level meter, the operator selects the appropriate measurement function. The system can also be programmed to automatically start up in this mode. As soon as the function is started, the sound level meter shows all the instantaneous values. And we may choose to change them by selecting A, Z, Z, slow, fast, EQ and peak. We can freely choose them and confirm. Finally, we define whether we want to see live, minimum or maximum values. Under any conditions, the Excel 2 measures all values in parallel. The user can choose which results he wants to have added to his screen and at what size. Averaged values are not yet displayed as the averaging needs to be started first with the start button. The size of the measurement results can be altered by pressing enter on the measurement value. It toggles between normal, bold, x-large characters. Parallel to the sound level meter, the XL2 can display also spectral information in octave and one-third octave resolutions. Switching over to the spectral information can be done anytime by pressing the page function. Page function toggles between spectral information and numerical information. Also here we may freely choose what levels we want to see in the spectral information in any of these weightings as well as with the time weighting. And then we may select which trace we want to have displayed. It can be live, max, min, EQ or a hold for a specific period of time. The same for the bar trace which is currently the life that can be switched over, for example, to minimum. And as soon as we start the measurement period, we see now dotted lines EQ, this one here, and the minimum is represented by the bars. You may notice that the cursor is always following the maximum of the dashed line. We may gain control over the cursor by placing the icon over the cursor next to the frequency, press enter and then every increment changes the cursor and we may directly read out the EQ as well as the live value at the frequency of 2.5 kHz in this example. As soon as we leave control it jumps back to the maximum energy of the dashed line. The displayed scales can be altered by placing the cursor to the respective scale. For example, at the low end of the x-axis, we may alter this by pressing enter and then move the resolution down to 6 Hz, losing on the high end no frequencies, no spectral content, but the overview over the wideband A and Z weighted levels 
and then confirming back with the cursor. The Y scale can be altered by placing the cursor to the maximum of the Y scale. After pressing enter, we can select the sensitivity in dBs per division, it can be 20 dB, 10, 5 and 2.5, very sensitive range here. And after this we have the scroll that allows us to move the scale up and down until it fits our requirements. If I want to change back to the 10 dB, I press again this here, go to 10 and move the scale up and down until it fits to my expectations. Measurements mostly only have a meaning if they can be stored. The Excel tool features therefore a comprehensive documentation tool that stores all the acquired measurements. To define a report, we place the cursor into the report menu and select the report page. The report page, as said, defines all the values you want to store after the, the measurement. This can be either a selected set or if we do not know, we can also store all the values that we have defined. In case we define selected, we may define up to 10 levels that we again can define out of a list to be stored here. In addition, we may add to the wideband values, we may add spectral information that can be either no or the LAQs are stored together with the numerical values or the LAQ together with the minimum and maximum or all the average levels that are available during the measurement. With this setting, at the end of every measurement, a complete report is stored together with the measurement results uh, onto the disk. We will see that after we have explained the logging functionality. For a comprehensive documentation, every measurement can be completed with a voice note recording that is stored together with the measurement results. The user may now ask what has happened that the LAQ was so high in the last 10 minutes or what frequency range contributed most to the LAQ. For this purpose, we have implemented the logging feature into the Excel tool. Logging writes the desired measurement results during a long measurement period at the defined measurement interval into a file, allowing us to find answers to all these questions. By calling up the log screen, we may define what values we want to have. First, we can switch logging on and off. This is the main switch that enables or disables logging. Then we define at what interval we want to write the values into the log file. The current setting is for every one minute and this can be altered up and down to levels uh, intervals as low as one second. In addition to the defined values, which are displayed down here, again the same setting, we can have all or a set of up to 10 levels that are uh, stored with every, after every log interval. We can also add the spectral information. And in addition to that, we may also have the complete audio signal stored together with the measurement results. At the end of the test, all the measurement results together with the test definitions, the completed report, as well as the locked 
results together with the compressed audio are stored. We may define the directory we are operating into to separate larger projects and handle them in individual folders. And then we define the test and we are proposed in this case with my test here that can also be renamed into any other name if desired. And as soon as we press save, it, the complete test is stored on the SD card. And we are free to change functions, to do other measurements. And very importantly, we may anytime load the complete test, including all the measurement results, again back to the analyzer. This ends the very basic sound level meter and real-time analyzer presentation. Please note that there are more functions that are not covered in this presentation, but will be reviewed in other videotapes. Please have a look at www.ntiaudio.com.